this is the fourth of seven videos in this series where we're going to introduce you to some of the fish that live in our watershed. We're going to teach you which ones are good to catch and which ones aren't. There are many types of fish that live in the waters of the Kennebecasis watershed. We have an idea of the number and the type of fish that live here by doing a fish collection technique called electrofishing. Disclaimer, don't try this at home. To do electrofishing, you need to have important training to do it safely for you and the fish. Electrofishing is done by sending controlled electric current into the water. Any fish that come in contact with that current will be stunned and move involuntarily towards the source of the electricity. The fish can then be collected in a net, weighed, measured for size, and then safely released. Another way for us to know what kind of fish are in our watershed is for anglers to fill out our creel survey on our website. This gives us information on the kind of fish that you are catching, what size they are, and if you can keep them or not. If we know what kind of fish are in our watershed, how many there are, and what size they are, it gives us an idea of how healthy the fish populations are. Also, if we find a new kind of fish that we haven't seen before, we can have a better understanding of how our rivers are changing and try to figure out why. Some fish can end up in a new place because someone introduced them. This is when fish are taken from somewhere else and then put in a new place they have never been before. This is never a good idea as the new fish could be better competitors than the fish that are already here, resulting in fewer of these fish and more of the new one. Never move fish from one place to another. Sometimes new kinds of fish can find their way here on their own too. This can happen as a result of a changing climate where some fish are better adapted to certain conditions. This is happening in our watershed right now with smallmouth bass. They are slowly moving up the larger part of the Kennebecasis and moving into smaller streams, and this could impact the populations of other fish as they are very efficient predators. Sometimes fish species can also decline in numbers because rivers can change due to natural and unnatural causes. Often this is a result of human activities such as building a road that crosses a tributary and the bridge or culvert is not big enough or installed properly to allow fish to pass through and get up or down the stream. We also have to be careful that we don't fish a river too much or too often so that there are enough fish left to keep having babies and keep the population strong. One way we do this is to have conservation management on streams where either no fishing is allowed or make it a catch and release only area. In the Kennebecasis watershed, such an area exists on the Kennebecasis River between McCulley Station Road and Portensvale, where you are only allowed to fly fish and must return all your catch to the river during the general fishing season. Also, the main stem of the Kennebecasis River also becomes fly fishing only on July 1st for the remainder of the general fishing season each year. So now that you know a little about fish, how we monitor them, and what we have to be careful of as to make sure the fish populations remain strong in the watershed, let's take a look at some of the fish you will find here. The family of fish that most people want to catch are from the Salmonidae family. This includes trout and salmon. In the Kennebecasis watershed, we have both, but you cannot keep an Atlantic salmon, no matter how big or small. This is because Atlantic salmon in our watershed comes from the Inner Bay of Fundy subpopulation, which is listed as an endangered species, which means their numbers have been in decline for a long time and there aren't enough to keep their population healthy. Young Atlantic salmon look a lot like brook trout when they are in their par in smolt stages, so it's really important to learn how to identify a salmon no matter its size. Here are some important differences between a brook trout and an Atlantic salmon. When you are fishing, there's a chance you will catch other fish species. Here are some others you may see, although you may not want to eat these ones. Check out our next video where we're going to teach you some safety tips for you to take with you next time you go fishing on the river. To help you try to remember all the information in this video so that you don't forget anything when you go fishing, check out the link in the description to our worksheet that you can fill out and test out your knowledge.